I, I think Kenyans will remember him as I've painted in that uh, long explanation that uh, they will remember him for what you'd call uh, his uh, uh, determination and sacrifice and the long nights that uh, he endured to see to it that uh, there was a political uh, truth, that uh, a consensus had, was to be struck between the sides. Remember, in an interview that I sat down with uh, Martha Karua, who was the uh, PNU's lead negotiator, and then courtesy of a position as the Justice and Constitutional Affairs Minister in the half government that President uh, Mwai Kibaki had already put in place, and the other side, uh, Musalia Mudavadi, who was the lead negotiator on ODM, they would say at a point when they would retreat back to get instructions from their various quarters, it wasn't easy. But Kofi Annan, not once, not twice, he almost threw in the towel because it was not easy to convince the President Mwai Baki government that was already in place that uh, they have to talk to ODM, which believed that they had uh, won an election that had been snatched from them, and therefore having uh, negotiating with a team that already had half of government in place, it wasn't easy. And of course, when it came to that question of portfolio balance, on uh, even if they were to come together, what could uh, be a new side hand over to ODM, or what would ODM decide not to pursue further? to take from uh, PNU, it wasn't easy. There was the talks of Kilaguni that nobody really knew what happened in Kilaguni where it was said that uh, they tried to fly in, to fly the president there and uh, the ODM uh, presidential candidate, Raila Odinga, and they went to Kilaguni and they could not make any headway. Now they came back to Nairobi almost a week and nothing could happen until when uh, one afternoon we saw clips of him walking on the streets of Nairobi frustrated. I think he took a walk from the Serena Hotel to the CBD and everybody thought that now the talks have finally collapsed only for him to get hold of uh, a retired uh, Tanzanian President Jakaya Murisho Kikweta, who had just taken over the chairmanship of AU from uh, Ghanaian President uh, then John Kofor to be the chairman of the AU. And therefore, when he was almost throwing in the towel, he decided that he'll give it a final chance. And in his wisdom, he decided to shed off even uh, his other partners as the, uh, in, the in the panel, that is the eminent persons, but to come forth and uh, now engage the principals to see how best were we going to have a solution to end the political crisis that was in Kenya. And therefore, Kenyans would really recall that particular aspect of sacrifice that he endured the political tension, the political machinations from both camps, ODM and PNU, but to ensure that he midwifed the birth of the Grand Coalition government, which uh, brought the much-needed peace in the country that was in turmoil politically, so to speak. So I think those are the aspects that Kenyans will do. And remember, even before that famous uh, 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 international criminal court, there was that aspect that uh, he told Kenyans that uh, if they are not going to set up a local tribunal to address some of the issues that uh, brought problems in Kenya, he would hand over the list that had been uh, given, the report by the Waki Commission that had uh, investigated on what led to the post-election violence to Kenya. So he was very lenient and he kept on flying in and asking the country's leadership, how far have you gone? And it was until when there was no political goodwill to set up a local mechanism popularly referred to as the local tribunal, that he eventually handed over that list to the AS, to the ICC, the International Criminal Court, that now saw one Louis Moreno Campo now take charge of the affairs, and we all know how that one ended. Therefore, this is one person who was a think patient with Kenya. He negotiated the national accord, then said, Please put in place, there the, the were key issues, there the were four top agendas that were supposed to have been uh, looked into. He said, if you're not going to look into that, then I'll have no option than hand you over to the International Criminal Court. And after that failed, that is the time that now Kofi Annan decided to hand over Kenya before the International Criminal Court, again for that historic moment that saw 
Kenyans for the first time arraigned before that Hague-based International Criminal Court. So there are various issues that Kenyans will actually remember him for, Zinzi. All right, thank you so much, Kaemba. Dr. Kaemba, our senior political reporter, walking us, walking us down memory lane, even as the world marks the death of Kofi Annan, such a great contribution that he made towards the world of diplomacy. Perhaps it should be more of a celebration of a life well lived. He has passed on at the age of 80 from short illness. That is what we have gotten from the United Nations International Organization of Migration. He served as the seventh UN chief for, for almost 10 years, from January 1997 to December 2. 2006 and as you've heard he played such a critical role in the peace accord between former president Mwai Kibaki and that of Raila Odinga back in 2008. Let's take a quick commercial break to digest all this. We'll be right back. <laughs>